Good morning and welcome to Ed Shed and other projects. Today I'm going to be showing you how I turned one of these, an old Mamod TE1A, into one of these, a little Mamod portable engine. I started off with an original Mamod, just like this one here, although this is an earlier one, this is one of the later ones, and I thought, how can I turn this into a portable engine. When I was younger, I used to crew on a full-size traction engine and also on a portable engine called Old Bob. So I thought to myself, let's try and recreate one. So I started off by taking the rear wheels off the Mamot, taking the axle out and drilling a new hole a little bit further along on the smoke box, moving the rear wheels forwards. And then I unriveted the engine from the Mamod traction engine and there it stayed for about 14 years in the condition that you can see it in in this little video here where it's being pulled by my Walesco tractor but then during the lockdown of 2020 due to the coronavirus COVID-19 I had a lot more time on my hands so I set to in my workshop and I chopped off the front axle um, underneath the smoke box and I bought myself some JB Weld. Isn't that great stuff? And I moved the front axle bracket back by probably about half an inch. So now the rear wheels are further forward and the front wheels are further back. But the big problem with turning an engine around on a Mamod engine is that it's mounted originally on the firebox, which is obviously flat. Whereas if you're turning it around, then you're going to have to mount it on the boiler, which is round. So I made up this bracket, uh, which I must admit is a little bit schoolboy, but I made it up out of some very thin uh, sheet metal, bent it, cut it, filed it, drilled it, riveted it, and then attached it. And there it is. That's what it looks like. So now you can see it being towed again by the Walesco in its next stage of the build with the engine in the correct place. The front wheels have moved back, the rear wheels have moved forwards. But then I thought, well, how on earth am I going to make the Mamod funnel into one that looks more like a portable engine? Because obviously the original Mamod is cast, it's part of an aluminium casting on the front of the smoke box. So again, I got my hacksaw out and I chopped it off. In fact, I chopped it lower than I originally had. And I had an offcut of a piece of 12 mil copper pipe. So I thought, perfect, that will be ideal for my new chimney. Roughly to scale, it kind of looks all right. But I didn't want it just to be a static chimney. I wanted it so that I could have it either in the upright position or laying down on this little bracket here. If I put my hand there, you can see it so that it can lie down on the back of the engine and it looks lovely. So how do you overcome this? Well, very hard to make hinges that small, uh, especially when you don't really have the equipment to do it. So I thought, and this a little strike of genius, I took one of these 90 degree 12 mil copper pipe bends and I cut one of the end flanges off so it looks like this. Now, but the other flange, of course, I just glued with JB Weld onto a short piece of 12 mm copper pipe, which I had already glued into the smoke box. And the finished result looked like this. Then I just painted it really uh, to make it look more realistic. Now comes the challenging part, installing the new steam pipes. On the original Mamods, it's quite simple. One pipe comes up into the engine, uh, and then another two come out of the engine and into the funnel. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, everybody's happy. But I've obviously turned my engine around, so I've got to make my own steam pipes now. It is a greater distance from the hole in the boiler to the engine, and then also from the engine to the funnel. So three new pipes had to be made. So that meant going onto eBay, buying some new copper pipe, uh, cutting it to length, and then bending it. Then came my new skill of this particular product, soldering a copper pipe. Very, very simply, you take your copper pipe and you put it over the hole that you want it to be soldered onto, get a cocktail stick, push it through the hole into the pipe and it will hold it there for you. Then take your solder, wrap it around the outside of the copper pipe against the hole and then go out and buy yourself one of these. A kitchen blowtorch. Light it and melt it. That's basically it. Um, and you can see my attempts here in these 
photographs. So the first one shows the the cocktail stick going up into the pipe from through the engine plate. The next one shows it uh, just been soldered, it's still smoking, which fun enough is a cocktail stick because that caught fire. And then the last one is the three pipes all in place and ready to go. So without any further ado, I put some water in the boiler, lit a fire underneath it and had a look to see if it would run. And hey presto, here it goes. Now for one of the finer details of the engine, I wanted to have it, as I said earlier, so that the chimney could either be in the upright position as though it was working or in the lower position um, so that it could be transported. So I thought, well, how on earth am I gonna make a little bracket and somehow attach it on the back of the engine. Well, as you can see, I managed it. Here it is, lovely little bracket here. Um, I simply took a washer and my hacksaw and I cut the washer into a U shape and then used a little needle file to file a little dip really um, underneath it, underneath on a bit of an angle so that it could be sat with, you guessed it, JB Weld onto the whistle bracket. So there is a little bit of movement there, but it does mean that I can now take the chimney out, lie it down, and it can lie down like this. And it can now be transported and towed around and look even more realistic. So isn't that great? Then it was time to strip down the whole engine and paint it all up. So I think I've used black hammerite on the smoke box, on the chimney, on the flywheel, and on the firebox. Uh, and then the rest of it is all original, actually. Oh, I also used black hammerite on the steam pipes and the engine bracket. But for the eagle-eyed among you, you can probably notice that this flywheel is a little bit bigger than standard. Here is a standard Mamod flywheel, and in one of the videos earlier, you can see it being towed with a smaller flywheel. Now, that doesn't quite look right, does it? Because comparing that to old Bob, he's got a much bigger flywheel. This is what I originally had on it, one of the Mamod flywheels. I took that off, went back onto eBay and found this. Um, not quite sure where it's come from. It might be from a Stuart engine, not too sure, but I think it looks a lot better. So I painted that up. Uh, it doesn't have a grub screw in it and I don't have any taps and dies. So JB Weld glued it on. So hopefully I'll never have to take that off. Now, what I want to do for you today is, a little something I prepared earlier. I have screwed all of my Mamod workshop bits and bobs onto this base plate here and Again, when I was probably about 13, 14, my dad made me this. A drive band from a bicycle in a tube. Woohoo! So let's fire her up and see if she can run all of this. <sighs> this particular engine, I think, was built from a kit when it was new uh, because some Muppet Let's put the sight water glass on upside down. So, make it up really. Let's see what happens. Now last time I fired this engine up, it was quite a wet engine, quite leaky. Um, so there'll probably be quite a lot of water. Woohoo! Right, so the fire's lit, water's in the boiler. I'm just gonna tighten down the safety valve. Make sure that doesn't leak too much for us. And now we wait. While we wait for that, I thought I might show you this. This is another little uh, Mamod project that I have on the go. It's turning a standard one um, into a ploughing engine. As you can see, I've already like roughly made some kind of little winding gear for underneath it, uh, extended the boiler, uh, and, well, there's the engine. Um, yeah, work in progress. The boiler's on these very basic things. Um, the rear half is the pressurized compartment and the front is basically just all for show. So I've been able to extend it by about four inches. Uh, and yeah, maybe in a later video, I'll show you how I get on making my little plowing engine. Not far off. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Come on. We have lift off.
maybe it's not quite going to run the workshop, but hey, there it is. Working little man with portable engine. Not bad for 14 years work. So there you have it, that is how I turned a Manmore TE-1A into a little portal engine. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, see you again soon.